We all have different stories, you know, we all have different memories. It was always obviously about getting the biggest ones and the fattest ones and the trophy ones. A lot of whānau around the motu are seeing tuna being impacted by land use change and other human activities and they really are crying out for information and understanding more about the tuna so that they can support it into the future. You know, they've been around for a lot longer than we have and we'd like them to be here for a lot longer as well. So we've got a part to play to ensure that happens. So for Mania Poto, it's about having a number of whānau that are engaged with the awa, participating in monitoring of their waterways uh, across our rohi. And so this is merely just a starter um, for that kind of mahi um, and succession planning as well. I'm going to be honest, you know, for many, many years it was just a, a source of kai. Um, since we've been on these wānanga, I've actually changed my views about that and I've become uh, more aware and want to be more protective of that taonga and I see them as that, as a taonga. Before embarking on this journey, that's all it was, catching and eating. Um, and then last year when we had our first tuna wānanga, I learnt more and I learnt how amazing they are. Um, not only in the science of like what they have to go through and their life pressures and what they do to survive, but the mātauranga, I've learnt so much about what they've provided and how much our whānau actually interact with them and learnt from them. And um, it's just been amazing. And so I have such a respect for them. I'm so fascinated by them. All of the mahi that we do is underpinned by our values first and foremost as Māori's. We've had a relationship with Ngāti Maniapoto for over 10 years now and so any of the mahi that we do, the foundation of that is whanaungatanga. So having those really strong relationships whereby we trust one another um, really helps. So I usually put two, two in there just in case because we don't want to get some big tuna thrashing It's really about not about things. science turning up and saying, hey look, I'm an expert, I've got the science, I'm going to tell you how this is. Um, in all of the kaupapa that we do, it's very much a shared learning experience. So um, valuing what each party brings to the table and actually utilising a number of different knowledge systems to help manage the resource or restore the resource or um, yeah, be, be better kaitiaki, I suppose. Well, there's the eels in this Who three? One of the greatest things about our wānanga is the involvement of rangatahi. So we've got a lot of like quite young children here. And if I learnt what they're learning now at like seven, like they know about invertebrates and they know about the life cycle and the pressures on the tuna, it can only be a positive thing for the future of our tuna and our waterways. Here we go. It's about One of the little girls named all the tuna. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. So she called one Scar, um, one was called Mark because he had a mark on it, and then there was another one with a mark, so she called him Mark too. Um, so it's really cool to see the kids as well engaged in the learning and as the kaitiaki for tomorrow, um, being part of the kaupapa as well. She's all like, thank you for giving me a new name. <laughs> Today I had a very strong sense of pride where we were able to take this beautiful tonga and, and return her back to the awa so that she can go on and produce more generations of beautiful, beautiful tuna. Goodbye, Legion.